Texas. It's like a country of its own. They say everything's bigger here. The buildings, the food, you name it. And boy, do they love them some football here. And meanwhile, basketball's kind of faded in the background. But not for much longer. Big bodies and quick athletes ain't strapping on pads no more. They step a foot onto the hardwood. There's something special taking place. And me, I'm just trying to see what's brewing here. Because there's a movement happening. Basketball has been on the rise for a while now. And that same passion for football is spilling over the hoop. Could it be the money behind the business? Or is it just strictly about the love? I came all the way from California just to find the heart of the city. I just landed in Texas and um, we're going to see Big E right now. Supposedly Big E, I never even met him. We didn't really know too much about him beforehand, but he's supposed to be one of the guys who uh, started AAU out here. And it's like one of, the, one of those OGs, man, that's been around and know the game and know a lot of people. So we're going to go meet up with him. So we head to the Bob Knight Fieldhouse to meet Big E. The gym is huge, six full-size basketball courts, and really shows how Dallas basketball has grown. Like Biggie, everything is bigger in Texas. We, we were so far behind with the AAU circuit and all that type of stuff, because at first, our kids couldn't play right away, so we were behind like other people when they were going. You know, and now we didn't caught up on that end where now our kids are getting some of that, some of that stuff they weren't getting at first, like the notoriety. Like, we've always had hope. What makes OGs is that they've seen a lot in their life. Like how the outdoor game used to make players better. One of those players who grew from the blacktop pickup games is Big E's little brother, Chris. He was a legend at the University of North Texas, and his trophies live in their childhood home. Chris never made the NBA, but you never know that talking to Big E. He still lives through Chris in a proud big brother way. He graduated from Dallas Kimball. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, and went to the University of North Texas. I mean, he got recruited by Arizona back with Miles, Simon, George. Like, everybody offered him. Man, we hooped at the park. I used to have to pick him on my team because he was younger than me. You know, they, it was like a big court and a little court. Everybody that wasn't that good had to go up. So I was like one of the studs, you know. So mm -hmm. I, I got to let my little brother come over there with me. So. I think that helped him because but that's how it happened, people right? so much more advanced, we roughed him up. Yeah. You know, here he is, 10 years old, we 16, 15, 16 years old, just giving it to him. But you know, every day he gotta come right back. Otherwise, he gotta come see me, I'm his big brother, so. I like to meet people like that because they tell you what basketball really is, or they give you like the real story. And um, it's just nice hearing it from somebody like him. So what's your story with Tim? How you know, how you man, Tim actually came to me about seven, eight years ago, man, just looking for something to do, wanting to be involved, whatever. I gave him a little eighth grade team to coach. He coached and we just been linked up ever since. He's a grinder, man. Yeah, he, yeah. he is. He's a grinder. Tim Martin. There's something different about him. He was one of the few people that I met that didn't want anything from me. He just wanted me to grow from where I was. I used to have no clue why he would help me, but comes to find out, he's just a good dude. He seems to have a troubled past, but never shows it. All he shows is the love he has for what he does. And I can see it every time he coaches and every time he trains. I see it when he's with his son. I know it to be honest and true because it feels familiar. And it's not something I run across every day. 
Uh, his assistant is Big Mo. He even bigger than Big E. Really? Yeah. <laughs> like one time I had to take them to Golden Corral. Man, what? That was the best money I spent. <laughs> they ate up everything. Who was like one of the better players to come out of Texas last year? Julius. Randall. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Matt Jones, go to Duke. Marcus Smart. Phil Forte at Oklahoma State. I've always looked at it like as far as uh, New York or like the Northeast. We got a lot of ISO guys, yeah. you know what I mean? Take you out the dribble. Yeah. West Coast to me is more of like a scoring. Like y'all got that, like the James Harden, the Nick Young. Y'all just had great scores. And Dallas is kind of like the garbage man. It's, it's a physical presence because of football. Well, you know, you know how like most kids will start out playing soccer yeah. at an early age. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody out here plays football. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So. Initially, what we have is football players playing basketball. Yeah. Plus with the concussion stuff, yeah. that whole epidemic, you know, a lot of people making that transition into basketball, and it's bigger than it's ever been, so. Big E and I were talking about it, I just said, like a lot of, just everybody's training. Yeah. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah. You know. And it's, it's bad because the parents don't check the resume no more. No. It's just weird because here I am putting all this effort into it and learning everything. And it's just kind of frustrating when you just see people just try to force their way into it. And mm -hmm. nobody really knows the BS yeah. from from what's good. You know, they see a guy throw out some cones or some player putting up a bunch of shots. And yeah. for me, I started really understanding it's not so much about I, mean, I can help a player get better, yeah. but it's more so about the how good the kid wants to get. I think in anything in in life, just like with the whole 10,000 hours theory and all that, like you're gonna either <coughs> expose eventually, expose the, the, the guys that just show up and try to train, or you're gonna get exposed. At some point in time, you're gonna be put in a situation to where people will know if it's authentic or if, it, or if you're a replica yeah. of something fake, you know? So I think, your craft and, and the hours that you put in into your craft, whether it's basketball, it could be any hustle. I think ultimately will always lead you down the right path to the elite status mm -hmm. that you need to be at because you can't cheat the grind. And that's the same thing with players, man. You know, they try to show up to them games working out a couple of days a week. And at some point, man, you're going to get exposed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you gotta always, that's why I say, tell my players, you know, stay ready so you never have to get ready. Tim was taking me to see some of the Plano West guys he trains. Plano West is one of the top teams in the country filled with high major division one talent. You got Tyler Davis, who's one of the best big men. He's a potential McDonald's All-American kid. You got DJ Ho, who's a potential pro. You got Mickey Mitchell, a 6'6 point guard, who's going to Ohio State. Then you also got uh, Chris Giles, the little sophomore, and he's got Oklahoma, Texas, Ohio State already offered. Dallas is still a football state filled with freak athletes. They just grow them different down there. With guys like Marcus Aldridge, Chris Bosh, Marcus Smart making it. You can't deny the basketball is on the rise. But you can't live on athleticism forever. You need guys like Tim to develop. And we just saw a rivalry game, which really wasn't that much of a rivalry from the looks of it. Uh, Plano West versus Plano East, and uh, it's a blowout. It's a lot of competition on that Plano West team. And, uh, this is pretty good basketball. This is a good level right here. Six Division One players on this team. A lot of things merging because of the social media. People are able to see how other people play in different uh, states. So you start to see people use different moves that you would see in like New York, and now you're seeing it here in Texas. So it's great to, to come out here and, and see everything that you work on in the gym with the players. Our our craft is in the gym. You know, we the behind the scenes guys, so to speak. So but tomorrow, what we got? We got a camp in Louisville. Me and Devin, we're gonna work on. Uh, really all facets of the game. And then after that, we also got an individual player workout with a few of the players from Plano West and also from Kimball and uh, Lakers. One thing we want, we're looking for you guys to bring a little bit of passion and enthusiasm, okay? 
Don't come in here, you know, just kind of lag, lollygagging and just kind of going through the motions, okay? By the end of, uh, at 2.30, everybody in this gym should be drenched with sweat. Pour everything in that you got today. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Everybody good with that? Yes, sir. All right, if you got a problem with it, take off, straight up. But if you want to, man, if you want to get better, you want to have some fun doing that, well, that's okay, too, because that's what we do. Hard work on three. One, two, three. Hard work. All right, let's get on the baseline. To see the, the kids' faces in awe of Devin, like he demands the attention, and that's what I love about him. I'm constantly learning, I'm constantly learning. I haven't gotten there to where I can say, you know, I can do anything. I know I can't. I'm learning. I'm always going to be learning, and I'm always going to be learning different drills. That's why, I mean, you can't ever say who the best trainer is or anything of that sort because we're always learning from each other, little tips and tricks and everything. And, um, it, it was. It's always good to get in the gym with everybody and, and work out. I just know the next time that I come out here, it will be better. You know, it will be put together because that's all we. I mean, if you're not getting better at every workout, you know, from the player standpoint and the coach standpoint, then what are you doing? You know, you shouldn't be out there. So. In my opinion, it's probably the competition level. I feel like just about, we, we got a lot of players around here that can just flat out go. That's my opinion, why Dallas, Texas is pretty high level for basketball players. We have ball handlers, shooters, big men, scorers. Just, I think uh, Dallas is the most versatile basketball area in the country. Mixtapes and five-star rankings build the hype of the next great star. I mean, but what is hype? Potential? Promise? Truth is, it's not real. See, basketball in its purest sense creates a childlike joy of just wanting to play. Just to play. It's a want to desire. To want to play more. To want to get better. To want to see how good you can get. It doesn't feel like you're working a day in your life. It's fun. I love it. I love playing one. I love playing basketball. I love set screens. I love stealing the ball. I love blocking shots. This is what I love doing, you know? And I think, you know, to the core of it, that's just what it is. That's what basketball is to me. It's competing. And that's what got it to where it is today. You know, and hopefully people keep, keep up that trend. I think that's what it's about. It's not really about us. It's about the player. You know, it ain't about me getting 50 kids in the gym and making a bunch of money in that day. It's really, at the end of the day, it's just about the player getting better. This round ball has taken me many places in the world that I never thought I'd see. But hands down, the best part of it all has been the people that I've met and the relationships that I've built. You can't really know someone until you understand their past, their struggles, their story. I never understood why Tim grinded so hard and respects his craft so much. Well, it comes to find out, he's had a hard part of his life that just straight up sucked. 
He's been evicted, homeless. Sometimes you gotta fail before you succeed. You know, you, you try to find your passion. Like, I was at that stage where I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So I was just trying different things. I was just quitting everything at that point. I'd start something and quit. But That part of your life sucks. Yeah. I get that too. It's just no clue yeah. what to do. Yeah. This is kind of like the genesis of where it all began. This is where I started training all those NBA guys. Like, you know, Josh Howard, Devin Harris, like Corey Brewer. So, but um, outside of that, it just brings up a lot of memories just because I, I didn't just train here. I kind of I lived here, you know, for a moment. So uh, I remember walking down. I used to park, you know, in this little neighborhood over here behind the cars just to blend in with the houses. And then, you know, I would wake up at like five o'clock in the morning just so nobody would see me. And come up here and, and take showers in the locker room. And um, just kind of think about where my next dollar was going to come from. Once I lost that car, you know, it was it was hard because now the, the motel I stayed at was about three miles from here. But like walking distance, it takes forever. So there was times I would run from the motel all the way over here three mile sprint just to get here to train two kids. You know what I mean? For $20 a pop, like for 40 bucks. I'm sprinting three miles just for one hour for $40. Like, it, yeah. you end up like doing really well or find the happiness, yeah. they kind of go through that time because it makes you appreciate mm -hmm. that, uh, it makes you appreciate it a lot more when you actually come from a time where you were just at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's just like, as long as you breathing, you walking, you got two hands, ain't no excuse. Tim represents that grit that Big E said was missing in Dallas based on the struggle. And that's what drives him. And what he's been able to pass on. I wouldn't have made my way to Dallas if it wasn't for Tim. And I'm glad I did. These are the types of relationships that makes this basketball journey so special. I saw some different things. But more importantly, I met some really cool folks along the way. I don't know exactly where basketball is going in Dallas. But what I will say is don't mess with Texas.